Good evening. Tonight we welcome a very good friend. Ralph Bellamy stars on the General Electric Theater. In research, in engineering, in manufacturing skill, at General Electric, progress is our most important product. Our play tonight is about a home away from home, the problem facing one of our military families on occupation duty overseas. Now to Colonel Wheeler, a doctor in the regular army, home is wherever he is quartered at the convenience of the government. For the present, it is this house near a permanent army base. And for Colonel Wheeler, it does very nicely. But for a small boy, like the Colonel's son, Home is more than rooms and stairways. Home is love and understanding and roots. Tonight, Ralph Bellamy stars in Outpost at Home with Billy Chapin, Russell Collins, and William Smithers. Drink, Ted? Sure. I think you'll like this better than the stuff we drank when we crossed the Rhine. <laughs> Remember, Remagen? Or will I ever forget it? The two of us, the Colonel and the war correspondent, sitting on the banks of the Rhine in the midst of battle, celebrating the birth of your son. <laughs> what a picture that must have been. Whenever I see a river or a creek, I remember that day. You been back to the States since I saw you last? Up to last year. You miss it much? I don't let myself miss what I know I can't have. I'm still a soldier, Drake, and home is where my orders say it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Yes, sir. I know there's no running in the house, but well, sir... yes, Jeff. Oh, good evening, sir. Hi, Jeff. Run along with your friends. I'll talk to you later. Thank you, sir. Is it all right? You're excused. <laughs> <laughs> that son of yours suddenly makes me feel very old and tired. We're all of us getting older, Ted. I'm going to be 46 next week. Are you tired, Tom? When I get a chance to think about it, which can't be often, huh? Doctor, Colonel, and since Renee died, father and mother. <laughs> He's a fine boy, Tom. Yes, he is. But I want him to be more than that. I want him to be a certain kind of man when he grows up. Like you. Better. Watch your step. I'm making it up here where he never comes. So he went home to his birthday. Man, it's high to you. Yeah, it's like the North Pole. I'm making him this pipe rack. How old is he going to be? Forty-six. Man, that's old. Do you think we'll ever get that old? Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to get that old here in Germany. I'll be out of this country next week. And you'll be here forever. Yeah, I guess so. Well, my father's just waiting to get out of here so we can go home. But your old man is in for good. He's a doctor. He has to be. Oh, he doesn't have to be. Well, I mean he's regular army. You'll be a regular Dutchman. Delivering the babies. 
That's the young intern's dream, I suppose. You know, Ted, you were going to run a small town newspaper. <laughs> and here we both are. All right, Jeff, come on in. Friends leave? Yes, sir. Come over here, Jeff. Let me look at you. I haven't seen you in some time. Have you changed? Natch? Naturally. Naturish. Jeff. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like Natch better. You still look like a little American from Sioux City. Well, why not? They go to American schools, play with American children. We try to keep them American. Yes, I know. But I'd like to go home. Bob's going home next week. Why can't we go home? Now, Jeff, you know we can't. Why? Because my responsibility is here. I wish we could go home. You can't always do what you want to do. You'll be going home someday, Jeff. Did you do your homework yet, Jeff? No, sir. I'm going back upstairs to the attic. Cold up there. I have to tell you, sir, a window was broken up there this afternoon. I broke it plain ball. Did you hurt yourself? No, sir. How did it happen? No excuse, sir. It just happened. Nothing just happens. Usually there's a reason. You're not allowed to play ball in the house. That's one of our rules. I know. If you know, then why did you do it? No excuse, sir. Well, put a piece of paper across it for now, and we'll have the glazier in tomorrow. I'll expect you to pay for it. Yes, sir. And just to remind you not to do it again, you're confined to the house tomorrow afternoon after school. Is that in order, sir? It is. Yes, sir. He's angry at me now. Tom, you and I know each other a long time. Can I ask you something? Sure. Why didn't you just say, too bad, forget it? Discipline, Ted. I grant you that's what I wanted to say, but I can't. Fairness to the boy. <laughs> Raising a boy all alone is a serious responsibility. You might even have felt better if you'd lost your temper. No, no, I've never shouted at him, never struck him. It's a question of discipline and self-discipline. You said yourself he's a fine boy, didn't you? Yes, I did. Well, wow. I've got to prepare him for the time when he'll lead his own life. Discipline's the only way I know. Is he happy? Why shouldn't he be? I've done everything I can for him. Everybody's happiness is not always the same. Don't take it for granted. Neither are you. 
How'd you get in here? There are three outside. You on me? Yes. Your brass. My father's a colonel. Oh, goodbye. <coughs> I guess that night air doesn't have such a salubrious effect on my breathing apparatus. You a soldier? I was. I don't know what I am now. Oh, man, I'm How'd cold. You... Oh. Don't you have a coat or something? I sold it for sausage. Are you hungry? Look, kid, you... You don't want to have nothing to do with me. I just want to rest here a minute, okay? Put my cold outside and I... I'll leave. Where are you going? Over the border into France. To a port, to a boat to go home. I took off without leave. <coughs> oh, man, I got fever. I'm burning. I gotta keep going. Please, you stay here tonight. I'll get you some food and blankets. I won't tell. Now you just get yourself in trouble. It's bad enough I'm over the deep end. I better go. <laughs> no, please. You stay here. I'll help you. <laughs> oh, I guess I don't have much choice. Why'd you run off? You know you're not supposed to. A soldier has to stick. I want to go home. I'm a farmer. I just... I got the longing so bad to go. I just got up and left, that's all. I guess that sounds crazy to you, being brass and a lot, huh? Oh, no. Look, kid, it ain't right. I know that. But I was sick. I just got the feeling I was going to get sicker. And I was going to die here in a strange country. So I took off, that's all. Did you ever dream of home? I dreamt of waking and I dreamt of sleep. You know, the teacher will be talking and I'll close my eyes and I can see him. What do you see? Oh, running in the fields and fishing and the kids playing ball, swimming in the summer. Yeah. I gotta go. I gotta get home. I'm gonna die here. I'll never see it again. I'll help you. Now they strip you of your brass, little colonel. Who cares? You know something? I feel the same way you do about home. And, and I'm going to get you better. And then, and then I'm going to go with you. No. You weren't very hungry tonight. No, sir. Or very talkative. Not. I was thinking. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> About soldiers. Why do they run away sometimes? Did you ever think of leaving the army? I mean, run off when you were young? Now, what kind of foolish talk is that, Jeff? Maybe he's thinking of going AWOL. <laughs> well, if a soldier does go, what do they do to him? Punish him. They throw him in jail? It depends. Is it wartime or peacetime you're thinking of? What is it now? There speaks a modern boy. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> if the offense were one of AWOL only, the sentence could be simple company punishment. But if he intended to stay away, well, that's desertion. Could mean dishonorable discharge and imprisonment. If desert's good. What's more, Drake? Uh, no, thank you. What do you think about now, Jeff? How it's a bad rule. What do you mean? Well, sometimes there's a good reason why somebody does things. Even bad things. Good or bad, discipline has to be consistent. An army couldn't exist on the basis of compromise. What do you mean, compromise? Giving in to your weaknesses. Or to some of the truth of the other side. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Jeff, the man who can take discipline is the stronger for it. 
Why does it make you stronger to do what you think is wrong? Some things are a little difficult to understand until you get to be a little older. <clears throat> Let's have coffee in front of the fire, shall we, Drake? Why not? Want to come along, Jeff? Not right now, sir. Thank you. I'm not hungry. Oh, man, I'm burning. Oh, first I'm hot and I'm cold. Uh, cold is in my bones. I can't get it out. I'm bright. It's hot coffee. Oh. You're all right, sonny. You're like the kids I know in Pennsylvania. seeing that fox. You see that fox? The fox will thieve and kill us. Don't do it. I don't know. I must be dreaming. I fell asleep. I keep falling away like that. <coughs> You're real sick. God help me. <coughs> I killed myself. Here I am dead. I'm almost dead. Maybe I ought to get you something. My father's a doctor. Lord, I thought you said he was a colonel. He's a doctor, too. All right, well, get, get me something. The cold is in my bones. The disease is in my bones. Tom, I don't think that boy of yours really understands what you're trying to do for him. He needs more than just discipline. That's why he wants to go home so badly. It's not for him to decide. He can decide even at his age what he feels. And you ought to respect that. Does my CO respect what I feel? Your CO is not your father. Maybe I'll send him home to school or something. Look, Tom. A kid has a right to his private thoughts. I know. But some things are frightening. And then a boy wants someone he can tell them to and not be ashamed. There has to be someone he can absolutely trust or the whole world falls apart. It's nice when it's his father. Sir? Yes, Jeff? What's good for a bad fever? Depends on what kind. You feel sick? No, sir. But my friend does. If you're cold, then hot and burning, is that some good? I mean, if you're out in the cold too long and you're not warm and you're coughing... Could be serious. Will Aspen help? Won't hurt, but whoever it is needs a doctor right away. Is he delirious? What's that? Kind of talking out of his head? Sometimes. Might be pneumonia. A doctor right away, you tell your friend's mother. Yes, sir. By the way, I didn't hear the phone ring. It didn't. Good night. Aspen. You have to take it. <coughs> You'll be all right. Sure, I'm going home. You come with me. I will. We'll run the France and we'll take a boat home. 
Nobody catch us. Never. Could you give him a slip like old sly foxes? No, let him alone. Please, let him alone. I see no, you, you sly thieving no. fox. Please. I see you. Please. <coughs> He's very sick. Probably pneumonia. We'll have to have an ambulance right away. He needs oxygen. The hospital? The army hospital? Is he a soldier? Drake, would you call an ambulance, please? No. No, you punish him and he'll never see home again. Now, what do you mean by that, Jeff? He was lonely. And he got sick and came here. And you put him in jail and he'll never see home again. Look, Jeff, I'll try to help him get well. That's part of my job. But after that, he'll have to face the consequences like anyone else. Why? Why do we have to tell anybody? Can't we just keep this between oh, you and Jeff, me? Jeff, please. He's real sick. <laughs> he wants to go home. We ought to help him. Jeff, it's a complicated world. Like I told you, an army has regulations and rules. The whole world does. They have them for very good reasons. This boy is a soldier. He knew the rules and he broke them. He was wrong and he has to pay for it. <coughs> Isn't he paying for it now? An army couldn't run very long on that kind of reasoning. I don't care. All he wanted to do was to go home like I do. Is that so wrong? He was under orders to stay. But he couldn't help it. He was sick. Everybody can't be perfect like you. I never said I was perfect. You are. You can't always punish people just because they make a mistake. All you think about is ruin. Jeff. I can't even tell you things anymore. I'm afraid to. Have I made you feel like that? Yes, yes. <laughs> Jeff. I... I didn't mean to. I meant everything for your own good, Jeff. Even though, even though it didn't seem like it sometimes, I, even though you thought I might have been wrong, it was always for your own good, Jeff. Because I love you. Because I'm your father. It isn't an easy thing. Being a father, can't you see that? All right, I'll do what I can. He's a very sick boy, in a lot of ways. I'll do everything I can to help him. Promise? I promise. Will he go home? Well, I can't promise that, but... I'll do everything I can to see that he gets a sick leave back to the States. And Jeff, whenever you want to talk to me again about anything, you come right ahead. It'll just be between you and me. I don't want you ever to be afraid to talk to me again. Yes, sir. You want to go home, too, don't you? Maybe you should. Back home to your own school. Your own friends. Did you like that? Would you come, too? I can't, Jeff. I have to stay here, for a while, anyway. Then I'll stay, too. Are you sure? Yes, sir. I want to go home. But I want to go home with you. Our thanks to Ralph Bellamy, Billy Chapin, and the rest of our cast. Next week, we have another first on the General Electric Theater. A lovely Hollywood star, Catherine Grayson, will make her first dramatic television appearance. It's an unusual and tender love story. Hope you'll be with us when Catherine Grayson stars in Shadow on the Heart. In the meantime, remember... From electricity comes progress. Progress in our daily living. Progress in our work. Progress in the defense of our nation.
and at General Electric. Progress is our most important product. Until next week, then, good night for General Electric.